Good morning. People have been trying to trap Jesus with questions for a long time, but they finally decide they can't, they can't do that. What happens then when Jesus begins asking the questions? Today we're looking at Mark chapter 12, verse 35 through 37. Let's see what happens here. Then Jesus answered and said while he taught in the temple, How is it that the scribes say that the Christ is the son of David? For David himself said by the Holy Spirit, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. Therefore David himself calls him Lord. How is he then his son? And the common people heard him gladly. So now Jesus begins to ask the questions. And that's quite interesting when Jesus begins asking the questions. There's many different kinds of psalms. One of the categories is uh, the messianic psalms, psalms which have to do with the reign of the Messiah, the coming of the Messiah. And Jesus refers here, Jesus just brings it up. They didn't bring it up, Jesus brings it up. He brings up the 110th psalm. Well, that is one of these messianic psalms. Now, if you look at that 110th psalm, it's just a short one, just seven verses or so. This psalm deals with the enthronement of the Messiah, it deals with Jesus, Melchizedek priesthood. It talks about the holiness of his people. And it also talks about him executing, Jesus executing judgment on those kings who uh, oppose his reign and are going for the evil. And so when you look at that with Psalm 110, it's a psalm really, a lot of it, for, for some of that would be hearing this, it would be a, an indication of judgment on unfaithful rulers and unfaithful religious leaders. So for Jesus to bring this up is kind of interesting at this time because they're on the point of crucifying him. They're plotting right now to murder him. And so Jesus has their number. So the argument that Jesus gives is if David calls him Lord, then how can he be a descendant of David and sit on David's throne? It's sort of like backwards. Of course, that's not impossible. If, if God becomes incarnate in human flesh, if he comes and lives and dies in our humanity, if he rises again, and then if he goes to heaven to receive his kingdom and comes back in, in a literal, visible, audible, personal uh, second coming, which we believe the Bible certainly teaches and we believe will happen. So there you have it. Um, Jesus puts this question to them. Now, what's their response? The response of the religious leaders and the leaders... They don't have anything to say. There's no response for them. But it says here, and the common people heard him gladly. So by this time, Jesus is just, he's, he's trying to help them out uh, to be careful about trusting too much in some of these other religious leaders. They're, they're going to crucify him in just a couple of chapters. So it's important for Jesus to give them some help here. Let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you for your great watch care over your people. None, none of these things surprised you or caught you off guard. And none of these things were things that, uh, that you didn't see coming. And so, Lord, we thank you for your watching over your people. We want, Lord, that we will be alert and awake and alive and ready for the things that are coming in our world today. We seem to live at the very end somewhere of time. So help us, Lord, to be ready. And we thank you that you are going to take your throne. You will reign over the universe and uh, wickedness will be ended, and unselfishness and goodness will prevail. Thank you for that, Lord. Thank you for that hope, something good to know in a day when we're about to go out into our day and see strangeness, uh, to put it mildly. Bless us and keep us, Lord. Help us to cleave to your kingdom. We look forward to your soon literal return. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. While presidents come and presidents go, but Jesus is king, and so we look forward to his soon return. He's coming soon. We want to be ready. We want our hearts to be ready. And when Jesus comes, I can only say hallelujah and hallelujah. God be with you today. By the way, I think you know that for YouTube videos, uh, engagement via putting, your, putting a little comment in, uh, liking a video, and most of all, subscribing, that shows YouTube that, hey, people like these things, and they move them up in the search ranks, and people are more apt to see them. If you want more people to see uh, these devotional videos, you know what to do.